Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Have you been wondering to yourself, why do you have such terrible range with your wireless? Well, I've got five tips to improve your wireless microphones. Tip number one is actually a pretty simple tip and that is less is more. If you are using something like 100 milliwatts and you find yourself getting a lot of interference on your other microphones, it could be actually your fault. And that is very simple in its physics. You have a carrier signal. That's the signal your transmitter is creating. And then you have the subharmonic signals. And those subharmonic signals are delineated, you know, left and right of the frequency carrier signal. And they get bigger as your carrier signal gets bigger, which means it's harder for you to find more spaces left and right for your other wireless. So if you're using multiple wireless, come on, back it down a little bit and actually give yourself some room to work. And now I know what you're saying, 10 milliwatts, 20 milliwatts, how am I supposed to get decent range at such a low wattage? Simple, tip number two. I know, you're probably saying to yourself, I don't believe you. You're first telling me use less power, now you're telling me use weak antennas? Yeah, let me show you. So, here's a receiver. Now if I use a very efficient, really good antenna, and it's good at picking up RF, it's also really good at picking up background noise, and all those subharmonics. So we screw this in and all of a sudden, we could be picking up signals from the next building over, the next studio over. All of that, we actually want to ignore. We only want to bother with the signal that we're wanting to pick up. So let's not use the efficient antenna. Let's actually use the weaker antenna. That's right. By using a weaker antenna, what you're doing is you're ignoring all of the weaker signals and you're only able to pick up really good signals. So what we do is we take the really good antenna and we make a really good signal for it to pick up. What that is, is signal to noise ratio. Ignore the background, only see the good carrier signal. And now you've got a better shot of actually picking up your signal in a rough environment. This stuff's awesome when you really think about like the way to trick the signals. The other way you can really trick the signal, how about just ignore like the noise coming from over there and only worry about audio coming that way. Simple. Tip number three. Tip number three is one of the easiest ones and it's probably the one you're probably most familiar with and that is get yourself a directional antenna. So if you've got a directional antenna, here's a big giant UHF one and here's a little Yagi one for the 2.4 gigahertz range. I can actually point this where I wanna pick up my signal and to the left and the right and the back and other little nodes I can ignore where my bad RF might be coming from. That also will help increase your signal to noise ratio. And what I really like about this little guy is let me just tell you, for the cost of like a high gain, really good, powerful, unique antenna, you can own one of these and actually get like really good range. Okay, so like, think about this. This one's from a company you've never heard of, but like it's made in America, made by a guy in Dallas, Texas. He makes them by hand and they're really cheap and affordable. It's a company called WA5VJB. It's a very trendy name. They're like the new up and coming uh, brand lifestyle. You've heard of Apple and Google. Soon you're gonna be hearing about WA5VJB, okay? What I love about this little antenna too, is when I put it on my receiver, he shipped it to me with this like really nice flexible coax cable that he soldered himself. And what's really nice is if you need to put it in some kind of weirder position, that coax cable with kind of a rigid shape will let you point that. So if I need to point it slightly up, I need to come in like that, I need to rotate it around. I can do all that with this antenna without having to get a full on mast and big giant, you know, cart setup that the UHF guys have to worry about. This is a really nice compact way of getting great directional antennas for 2.4 gigahertz. Not a bad little option. Directional antenna, ignore everything around you. Just get closer. I'm, I, I know, I, you're like, that's a cop-out tip. Let me explain. I know a lot of people, especially in the live event world, who get their receivers just a lot closer to talent than you and I probably would think about. If you watch a concert, the stage is set up, right? If this was the stage, I had my, say, guitar player on a wireless guitar playing around. I'm gonna put my receiver right off the edge of the stage. I'm gonna run a long XLR cable to where I'm positioned at the front of the house, okay? Cable carries audio really well. Cable carries audio a lot better than air. Air likes to carry radio frequencies, but if I only have this much air, 
Oh, that's a lot easier than like this much air. See what I'm saying? So cable coming out of your receiver, remote the whole receiver, a lot closer to set. And you're gonna have a lot easier time trying to pick up this audio. Ankle straps, okay? I have it on here for a reason and you might have seen it and you're like, okay, that's just like a little audio accessory that most people use because it's convenient because the outfit demands, you know, ankle straps. I understand all that, but let me tell you a little secret. I know a sound mixer in Atlanta who was shocked to find that his boom operator was kind of setting everything up with angle straps. So what he was doing was he was putting the basic whip antenna on his transmitter, but by positioning this whip slightly away from the human body and the human body being so thin at an ankle versus the massive amount of water wrapped around our waist area where we typically like to put the transmitter, right? He was actually getting all the range he needed because he was using the ankle strap. Not a bad little option. Humans, very thin at their ankle level. And then he was putting the transmitters on one foot little stands under a table shooting across the set. So he was getting the antennas closer. He was shooting through less material. He was positioning the antenna away from the skin and he was running them at a much lower wattage than you normally would have to if you needed to shoot through someone's body when you position it like on their stomach or in the small of their back. So he was doing like everything right and he was getting perfect reception. And when the sound mixer showed up on set, he was like, wait, what? This is how we were doing it all the time? Yeah, good creativity can get you good range if you think a little bit outside the box. If you guys have more topics and questions you have about audio, wireless audio, lavalier or shotguns, how to make lavaliers and shotguns work together, whatever your questions are, drop them down in that comment section below, hashtag mailbag. We've got a big giant live stream coming out where we're gonna be answering a ton of questions to really get you guys involved and kind of get everyone excited. There's a lot of trade shows that normally would be happening this time of year and we really miss talking to you guys, getting your questions and really interacting with you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But we're gonna do that as a giant group thing now with this giant mailbag live stream coming at the end of the month. So that kind of wraps it all up for us. If you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Thank you for watching.